Hi everyone, welcome to our Wednesday morning house of prayer. Uh, Wednesday mornings are just devoted to worshipping the Lord, encountering Him, prophetically declaring out of that place of being heart to heart. And uh, you know, our focus this morning is on prayer for Israel. Bible tells us in Isaiah 62, for Jerusalem's sake, I will not keep silent. So we're going to make a sound, maybe even a loud sound for me. <laughs> we'll see how we go. We'll worship. We'll just ease into it, I think. <laughs> okay, we welcome you and look forward to you joining in with us this morning.
Thank you.
the Lord is saying that as we're singing these verses, that the religious spirit is being broken.
Today we're going to ask the question in this overall theme, and the question is, what is God doing in Israel today? And we want to say uh, quite clearly to you that instead of scattering Israel, God is gathering Israel. And another word for gathering is restoration. Now if you watch the news on your device, or on TV, and you look at news about Israel, all you hear about is wars and battles and problems, etc. But the truth is that uh, in the land of Israel today there is a great restoration. There's another story. And it's a better story than what we get on the 6 o'clock news. And that story is a story of restoration. So restoration means something like this. It's the recovery of something that's been lost or stolen. But you know, biblical restoration or God's restoration is even greater than that. When God restores something, we receive back more than what was lost. In the book of Job, it tells us when God restored Job's fortunes, he gave him double what he had lost. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? If that isn't speaking of absolutely unconditional love, then uh, nothing is. Another scripture in Ezekiel chapter 36, 11 tells us when he's speaking restoration of the Jewish people, he says to them, I will do better for you than at your beginnings. And another version puts it something like this, I will make you better off than before. God is such a good God. So this restoration that we're talking about, um, we just want to talk a little bit about what it looks like. So if you remember after the Holy Spirit was poured out at Pentecost, um, Peter said to the crowd, when the crowd said, what must we do? And Peter said, repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you beforehand whom heaven must receive until the time of the restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. That's in Acts chapter 3, verse 20. When we look at this verse, often we really focus upon the refreshing that comes from the turning to the Lord. Um, But... This verse talks about, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, but Peter says that something really, really profound in this verse. He says that Jesus must remain in heaven until the time of the restoration of all things. So, in other words, there's a time in history when God is going to restore all things. Isn't that an amazing, profound thought? We're not just living in the past and the present, but we're actually looking forward to a future time where everything comes into perfect synchronicity and alignment with God's love, with God's perfection, with God's righteousness, where sin and evil are wiped away, where the nations come into their right place, where every single human being and creation is restored to the fullness of its beauty. And Israel, of course... Uh, at the centre of all that, will be restored to the living God. So, so when Peter preached that message on the day of Pentecost, you know, there was no New Testament. So the prophets he was referring to, the holy prophets, were the prophets of the Old Testament, the Jewish prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, and Daniel, and so on. So what was the restoration that they were... Referring to, well, they were prophesying the restoration of the people of Israel. And there are scores and scores and scores of Old Testament promises about the restoration of the people of Israel to 
the land of Israel, and to God himself. So, I'll just look at a couple of those. So today we want to look at the restoration to the land of Israel. And in Jeremiah 31 verses 7 and 8, the word tells us, it says, Proclaim praise and say, The Lord has saved his people, the remnant of Israel. He says, Behold, I will bring them back from the north country and gather them from the uttermost parts of the earth. And among them there will be the blind and the lame, a woman with child, and she who labours in childbirth together. A great company, they will return here to Jerusalem. So, as many of you will know, the Jewish people were scattered to the nations, and you know, it was a judgement that was spoken upon them for their disobedience in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. They were judged and were cast out of the land. And for like nearly 2,000 years, there was only a remnant of Jewish people who were resident in the land of Israel. And so there's this, there's this absolute kind of uh, crisis going on. The crisis is, God's made all these promises to Israel, but where are they? They're not in the land. But I thought, God, you promised to restore them to the land. And, uh, but... In, on May 14th, 1948, the modern state of Israel was founded in a day, just as the prophet Isaiah prophesied. He said, can a nation be born in a day? And of course the answer is yes. And today, the Jewish people from the nations all over the world continue to return to their homeland. And this process of immigration is called Aliyah. And Aliyah in Hebrew means to ascend, to go up. Isn't that an amazing thought? That to come home for the Jewish people to Israel, they're actually ascending. They're actually going up. It's a forward movement. It's an upwards movement. Now, in the absolute DNA of every Jewish person is a... Uh, just this strong sense that Israel is their home. In May 2019, a very famous Australian actually made, Jewish Australian made Aliyah. And you might know this person. This person, uh, who is actually a billionaire, so he's really well known. <laughs> and his name is uh, Sir Frank Lowry. And Sir Frank Lowry was the founder of Westfield Shopping Centres. <laughs> and a very prominent Australian. He was born uh, to Holocaust survivors. His parents had been in Auschwitz concentration camp and immigrated to Australia. And he was interviewed recently, uh, having just made Alia last year, as to uh, really said, they said, well, why, why come to Israel? And he said, I just feel that it's home. That's all. Very simple. And so that is that really kind of typifies this sense of home in every Jewish person's heart about the land of Israel. So this process of Aliyah, the Jewish immigration of Israel, is going on all the time. In 2019, almost 34,000 Jewish people from every nation on earth made Aliyah back to Israel. There were 30,000 in 2018. <clears throat> and since uh, the 1990, when the Soviet Union uh, collapsed, there's been over 1 million Jews make Aliyah from the former Soviet Union. It's, it's, it's a, like a, an exodus of biblical proportions. Uh, and so this is the kind of stuff that God is doing that we don't hear about often. And so now we've got a population in Israel of nearly 9.5 million people with about nearly 7 million are Jewish people. 6.5 million. 
all of them making Aliyah from the nations in fulfillment of the promises made by the prophets of old. Here's one of those promises. Yes, I will rejoice over them to do them good, and I will plant them in this land assuredly and in truth with my whole heart and with my whole being. What a commitment that is from God, that God will plant, bring them back, restore them to the land with his whole heart and his whole being. So this, this is really, this return of the Jewish people to the land of Israel is Biblical Prophecy 101. This is absolutely central to the Biblical narrative. And of course, as we said over the last couple of weeks, this is the covenant-keeping God of Israel, our God, who doesn't quit on His promises, who is faithful to the end, and who has a big story to tell through his covenantal faithfulness to the people of Israel. I've got a note here. If we do something with our whole heart and our whole being, it means we are totally dedicated and totally committed. So I'm going to pray a prayer uh, around this issue this morning and I invite you to join in you know, you might be sitting there in your living room and you may not have a grid for Israel. So I want to encourage you to go on a, a treasure hunt, to search for the jewels in the Old and New Testament that speak about this great promise of restoration for the people of Israel. One of the keys I'll give you right now is that when, we, when you read the Old Testament prophets, when you read the Old Testament and you see a promise that's made to Israel, don't just automatically assume that's your promise. Recognise the context in which it was given. It was actually given to the people of Israel. It's their promise, firstly and foremostly. And because we're grafted in, it's our promise too. So... We're just going to thank God this morning for this great restoration that he's... And then I'm going to hand on to Coralie. So, Father, we thank you that you are the covenant-keeping God, the promise-keeper, the way-maker. We thank you that right now you are restoring the people of Israel, the Jewish people, back to their land, the land of Israel. And Lord, we thank you, as we're going to find out next week, that you're not just restoring them to the land to have a, a great time, to have a land of their own, to have a place to call home, but you're restoring them for a very special purpose that has got to do with the restoration of all things that we're looking forward to. So we thank you today, Lord. Thank you for all those who are making Aliyah. We pray for the new immigrants. We pray that your blessing, your shalom, your peace, your protection, your, your establishing power would be upon them. And we thank you, Lord, that you have a plan and a destiny for each one that is returning to Israel. And so today, we ask you to unfold, reveal, unveil the purposes and plans and affections of your heart to your people in Israel. Amen. Amen. And you know, this morning, uh, I was uh, reading uh, a chapter from Isaiah, chapter 11. And uh, I was reflecting on how God had given me a measure of understanding about, the, about this chapter and what it was speaking about. And how there was a time in my walk when I used to find it really hard to read Isaiah. Because, you know, I, I just didn't understand it. And I, 
I never really looked into it. I never really delved into what the scriptures were actually saying. And so much so that my understanding of the seasons and the times and and uh, the, the coming, the second coming of the Lord and, and all that God had stored up for the whole earth and for the nations and for, in fact, the nation of Israel, my understanding was just like zilch. And, uh, and I, I did not look into it. But uh, this morning as I, as I read uh, the words from chapter 11, um, you know, I recognized the, the speaking of Jesus. I recognized what they were, they were, the prophet Isaiah was actually speaking about. And he was prophesying uh, hundreds of years before Jesus was born, but he was prophesying about how he was going to come from the lineage of David, from the, the, the stump of Jesse. Jesse was David's father. And it says here in Excuse me. It says here in, in chapter, uh, verse 1, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And we recognize that that this is uh, uh, Jesus, this is speaking about Jesus. He, he in fact, is uh, uh, coming forth out of the root of Jesse and he is coming forth to, to, uh, to be the one, the one who bears the Spirit, the Spirit of God, who is also the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit. And uh, chapter at the end, the last verse, uh, when verse 16 and there will be a highway this is a this is a prophetic promise where the, the prophet Isaiah has seen what the Lord is doing and he has seen the Lord's hand there will be a highway from Assyria for the remnant that remains of his people as there was for Israel when they came up from the land of Egypt and here the prophet is is seeing the past, he's declaring what has happened in the past, and he's seeing it, that it is going to come in the future, again, in a future time. And we understand that uh, he, is, he is speaking about this remnant, this remnant which is uh, Israel, that remains of the people of God. And, uh, and there are, there are great and mighty mysteries here that are waiting to be uncovered, waiting to be uh, uh, revealed to, to the people of God, to those who have a heart to know and a, heart to, and a, and a desire to understand uh, the scriptures. And, and uh, so we really see that in this day, uh, God is opening these things up, isn't he? To, to many, to many, many, many. We've walked for long, long years, decades I have with the Lord and, and not really seen these, these, uh, these um, truths that are in the scriptures. I've just passed over them and I've just said, oh, I don't understand that, I don't get that. But uh, I'm very thankful for this season where God is, is opening up our eyes and is uh, inviting us to walk in these in these precious promises, in the revelation of these promises, of the things that are to come and the things that are happening in this day. Amen. There is such fresh, this fresh manner in the scriptures, there are great treasures in the scriptures. And the restoration of Israel in our day is gathering pace, and it's in our sights. And I believe that this is a word for the whole whole church, the whole Gentile church, the church of Australia, the church in the nations. That we would begin to get a heart for the things that God is totally committed to. And so we know from scripture that the restoration that the Jewish people 
to the land of Israel is something that he is totally committed to. And so we bless the nation of Israel, we bless the people of Israel, and we bless the church. We bless the Dalesford Church and the Church of the Nations that we would see the things that God sees, that we would hear from God and that we would feel the things that God feels strongly about and that in doing and that in having that revelation we would be able to partner even more effectively with the Lord in this next season. And I just had a thought um, this time where we're all locked up in quarantine all over the world we're actually locked up not only in our own homes but we're, we're locked up in our own nations. And, you know, it's a really good time to be focusing upon the call of God upon the nations. Did you know that God has a call to the nation of Australia? Just like he had a call to the nation of Israel and has a call to the nation of Israel, God has a call to this nation, to the nation, to every nation, to partner with him for the restoration of all things, for the restoration at the centre of it all, the nation of Israel, in preparation for his return. But we're going to talk a little bit more about that next week. But, uh, so we encourage you, come on back and delve into this mystery, <laughs> the mystery of Israel, some more. And we're just going to continue to worship and to prophesy and to declare his goodness over the land and the people of Israel and over our own nation, wherever we're watching from. So I'm just going to hand over the feed. Ah, we've got some artwork. Probably just going to hold it up. <laughs> Again, big love voice. Um, I, it's it's not much, but I just felt to draw the shoot of Jesse, and the colours repre represent Israel and all of her beauty and all of her intricacy and and um, and the fact that she makes the flowers so beautiful. The environment is what the make is what makes the flower what it is. Um, and I was also just struck by God saying. Even when we no longer see something as beautiful, it doesn't lose its beauty. And that Israel has always been so beautiful to God. So even when we haven't been able to see her beauty, even if at the moment we just haven't had that connect heart mind connection, she is beautiful. She's so beautiful. And, and um, I feel like in a marriage, when you stop seeing the beauty of your wife, you start declaring the beauty of your wife. So I just feel like today, maybe you're not seeing the beauty of Israel, but if you just declare the beauty of Israel, if you declare the chapter of Isaiah, if you declare the book of Isaiah, if you just declare what God has said about her, um, it might not change your heart, but it will reaffirm truth. So we just thank you, Lord, that Israel is beautiful, and her people have always been beautiful to you, Lord God. Her people are, tr are precious. We just pray, Lord, that you would just um, partner with us as we declare her beauty, Lord God, as we declare the Jewish nation as a beautiful nation, Lord God, that you would partner with us with a promise of revelation, God. And we just thank you for that, Lord. Amen. So we'll go out with a song. <laughs>
And we're going to declare his precious promises over our community of Dalesville, over our families. And then here on Saturday night, live streaming to worship the King of Kings with extravagant praise and worship and then Sunday morning for our Sunday morning service and of course our children's Zoom meeting uh, called Kids Connection on Sunday morning. You can access that by contacting one of us on the numbers on the church website.